We came here today in the name of the Drum Major Institute, which was started in 1961 by Dr. King, my father, and others, because nonviolent social change requires conversation. We just had an extraordinarily constructive conversation about how to carry forth the legacy of Dr. King and most importantly, make it easier for everyone to vote. As Martin put forth in a Washington Post op-ed just yesterday, we're 138 out of 172 democracies when it comes to voter turnout and President-elect Trump has committed to us to work with us to once and for all make it easier for all people to vote. You will read about the Trump card, which is in the Washington Post story. And as Martin will tell you, it is every president, from Carter to Clinton to Barack Obama, who said the system is broken. And this president may well have the unique opportunity to finally live true to the Voting Rights Act and once again make it easy for all Americans to vote. Let, let me briefly um, not just reiterate, but state that we did have a very constructive meeting. Uh, the seminal right of the modern civil rights movement was the right to vote. And my father uh, fought so diligently for, and certainly Congressman John Lewis and many others, Hosea Williams, uh, fought for as well. It is very clear that the system is not working at its maximum. And through an op-ed that you may have seen, we provided at least a solution to begin to address a broken voting system. Uh, that was the dialogue, most of the dialogue that we talked about constructively. We believe we've provided a solution that at least will give everyone an idea. Mr. King, as you know, Representative Lewis has, still has the scars from the march on Selma. Were you offended by the President-elect's tweet that Representative Lewis is all talk and no action? Well, first of all, I think that in the heat of emotion, a lot of things get said on both sides. And uh, I think that um, at some point, I, I am, as John Lewis and many others are, a bridge builder. The goal is to bring America together and Americans. We, we are a great nation, but we must become a greater nation. And what my father represented, my mother represented through her life, what I hope that I'm trying to do is always bring people together. Sir, do you, you know many African-Americans? Sir, president. many African-Americans are very concerned about a Trump presidency. A woman came in here last week and told me he's going to have black people up against the wall, both literally and figuratively. Did he allay your concerns that he'll be a president for all people, black and white? Well, certainly he said that, that he is going to represent Americans. He said that over and over again. Uh, and I think that we will continue to evaluate that. I think that the nation supports, I believe that that's his intent. Uh, but I think also we have to consistently engage with pressure, public pressure. It doesn't happen automatically. My father and his team understood that, did that. Uh, and, and I think that Americans are prepared to do that. But sir, if I may follow up, isn't there something that just cuts to your core when you hear the president-elect refer to John Lewis as all talk and no action? I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. Isn't that right? John Lewis is not all talk and no action. No, absolutely, I would say John Lewis has demonstrated that he's action. As I said, things get said on both sides in the heat of emotion. And uh, at some point, this nation, we, we've got to move forward. We can't stay on. I mean, people are literally probably dying. We need to be talking about how do we feed people? How do we clothe people? How do we create the best education system? That's what we need to be focused on. On this day, what would your father's message be to President-elect Trump? What do you think your father's message would be to President-elect Trump? Well, this is the final answer I'm going to have, because I'm going to reiterate what I just said. I think my father would be very concerned about the fact that there are 50 or 60 million people living in poverty. And somehow, we've got to create the climate for all boats to be lifted. In America, with a multi-trillion dollar economy, $20 trillion almost, it's, it's insanity that we have poor people in this nation. That's unacceptable. And when we work together, we know we can roll up our sleeves. There's nothing that we as Americans can't do. Thank you very much.